It's a small town. It's rural America in every way. This is the family next door. Very connected, very loving, very bonded. They spent a lot of time together. The happy American couple. Eric ran a successful contracting business. He was involved in his boys' sports activities. He was very good to the boys, and he taught those boys so much. Corey was a real estate agent that also would buy and fix up and flip homes. She was smart, she was savvy, she knew how to connect. She was absolutely in love with Eric and absolutely in love with her boys. Eric and Corey were probably at the best place they've ever been in their marriage and seemed genuinely happy with each other. They had it all. I mean, it was one happy family. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I got a phone call, and it was Corey. And she said, get up here. Something's happened to Eric. He went to sleep and never woke up. She was a complete wreck. She's sitting on the couch. She's just bawling. Were they giving you a sense of how he may have passed? Um, so the paramedics said aneurysm, so we were all believing aneurysm. I had saw him the day before. He looked horrible. He said, my chest hurts. So the last time you're seeing him alive, you don't think he looked very good. Right. The lead detective and a, another officer came to her house and said they were going to close the case. They're done. It's an accidental overdose. They communicated that Eric had died of a fentanyl overdose. In the weeks and months after Eric's passing, how would you describe Corey, her state of mind emotionally? How was she handling things? It probably took her two months to go back in her own bedroom. It was devastating to her. She writes a children's book. She did this to help her work through the feelings with her children. The book, I think, was 100% beneficial to the boys. Then you can take a sigh of relief. It's over. We're done. We can start living again. And then I got a phone call. Corey was just arrested in Salt Lake. A Summit County woman who wrote a children's book about coping with grief following her husband's death, now accused of being the one that actually killed him. I think she felt that this would be treated as an accidental overdose, and nobody was going to be the wiser. He told his family, if I die, you need to take a look at her, because I think she's trying to kill me. They're going to have to prove that she got the drugs and that she somehow gave them to him. And unless they can connect those dots, they're going to have a hard time proving murder in this case. 